security in India. The purpose of food security is to ensure that everyone always have enough to eat. Food security means availability, accessibility and affordability of food to all people at all times. The poor households are more vulnerable to food food insecurity whenever there is a problem of production or distribution of food crops. Food security depends on the public distribution system or the PDS and government vigilance and action at times when this security is threatened. Now let us see the food security in India. Food is essential for living as air is for breathing. But food security means something more than getting two square meals. Food security has following dimensions. Availability of food means food production within the country, food imports and the previous year's stock stored in garment granaries. Accessibility means food is within reach of every person. Affordability implies that an individual has enough money to buy sufficient, safe and nutritious food to meet one's dietary needs. Availability, Affordability and Accessibility Thus, food security is ensured in a country only if enough food is available for all persons. All the persons have the capacity to buy food of acceptable quality and there is no barrier on access to food. So why there is need to secure food? People living in poverty suffer from lack of food security most of the time as they cannot afford food. In situations of natural disasters like earthquake, drought, flood, tsunami, widespread failure of crops causing famine etc. takes place. The problem of food security assumes larger proportions and affects a larger number of people. Natural calamities like flood and drought destroy crops and existing food stocks triggering a chain reaction. Destruction and a decrease in the production of food causes a decrease in the availability of food. A decrease in the availability of food causes food prices to rise. The rise in food prices decreases the affordability and more people are unable to buy food. A natural calamity affecting a large area for a long duration of time leads to starvation and conditions of famine. Famine is characterized by widespread deaths due to starvation and epidemics caused by forced use of contamination water or decaying food and loss of body resistance due to weakening from starvation. The worst famine in Indian history was the Bengal famine that hit the Bengal province of British India in 1943. This famine killed 30 lakh people in the province of Bengal. Here we can see the starvation victims due to the Bengal famine. Nothing like the Bengal famine has happened in India again. But it is disturbing to know that even today, deaths are often reported from Kalahanadi and Kashipur in Orissa, Baran in Rajasthan and Palamo in Jharkhand. So who are the food insecure groups of India? The economically backward state the tribal and remote areas and areas prone to natural disasters like droughts and floods have a higher percentage of people with food insecurity. The state of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa, West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, parts of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra account for largest number of food insecure people in the country. A high incidence of malnutrition prevails among women. This is a matter of serious concern as it puts even the unborn baby at the risk of malnutrition. 
hunger is both a cause and effect of poverty and indicates food insecurity hunger is of two types one is a chronic hunger and the other is a seasonal hunger chronic hunger is a result of consistently low quantity and quality of diet whereas a seasonal hunger is a result of low quantity and quality of diet for a short period of time both chronic and seasonal hunger has decreased in rural and urban india food security requires elimination of present and future hunger india has made rapid strides in attaining self sufficiency in food and to provide food security to its large population the introduction of green revolution in india marked by a dramatic increase in the production of food grain the introduction of modern farming brought about the green revolution indra gandhi the then prime minister of india officially recorded the impressive strides of the green revolution in agriculture by releasing a special stamp entitled wheat revolution in july 1968 the success of the green revolution was not uniform across india in states like punjab and uttar pradesh wheat production increased by more than four times from 1965 to 1995 the states of tamil nadu and andhra pradesh saw a significant rise in rice production the states of maharashtra madhya pradesh bihar and orissa and the northeastern states did not show any significant rise in food rice production during the years 2012 and 13 The production of food grain in Uttarakhand, Jharkhand, Assam, Tamil Nadu has dropped. West Bengal and Uttar Pradesh on the other hand recorded significant increase in rice yield in the same years. Food security in India. Since the advent of the green revolution in the early 70s, the country has avoided famine even during adverse weather conditions. India has become self sufficient in food grains during the last 30 years because of a variety of crops grown all over the country the availability of food grains at the country level has further been ensured with a carefully designed food security system by the government this system has two components one is a buffer stock and the other is a public distribution system Let us learn in detail about these components. Here we can see the economic survey of the rise in food grains from 1960 to 2014. There is a drastic change in the rise during 1960 and 2014. Let's begin with the buffer stock. Buffer stock is the stock of food grain namely wheat and rice procured by the government through food corporation of india or fci the fci purchases wheat and rice from the farmers in states where there is surplus production the farmers are in return paid for the price of their crops this price is known as minimum support price the minimum support price or the msp is declared by the government every year before the sowing season to provide incentives to the farmers for raising the production of these crops the purchased food grains are stored in government granaries but do you know why this buffer stock is created by the government this is done to distribute food grains in the deficit areas and among the poorer strata of society at a price lower than the market price also known as the issue price this also helps resolve the problem of shortage of food during adverse weather conditions or during the periods of calamities next comes 
the public distribution system. The food procured by the HCI is distributed to government regulated ration shops among the poorer sections of the society. This is called the public distribution system. Nowadays, we can see ration shops in localities, villages, towns and cities. People having a ration card can buy a fixed amount of sugar and food drinks every month from a fair price shop. Here we can see people buying food drinks from a ration shop. There are three kinds of ration cards in India. The Antyodhya cards for the poorest of the poor, the BPL cards for the people living below the poverty line and the APL cards for all the other people. The rationing of food in India began after the Bengal famine in 1943. The rationing system was revived in the wake of an acute food shortage during the 1960s prior to the Green Revolution. The high poverty ratio reported by the National Sample Survey Organization prompted the government to launch three important programs related to food security. These programs included strengthening of the existing public distribution system and the introduction of the integrated child work and food for work. The government has also launched several poverty elevation programs that enhance food security by increasing the poor people's income and the affordability of food. Employment programs greatly contribute to food security by increasing the income of the poor people. Current status of public distribution system Public distribution system is one of the most important programs run by the government to ensure food security in India. Till the year 1992, public distribution system applied universally to the entire population of India. All the people holding ration cards could buy food from the ration shop at uniform subsidized rate. In 1992, revamped public distribution system was introduced in 1700 backward blocks in the country. In 1997, the targeted public distribution system was introduced to extend the PDS benefits to the poor in all areas of the country. In the year 2000, two special schemes were launched, namely Antyodhya Anna Yojana and the Annapurna scheme with special target groups of poorest of the poor and needy senior citizens respectively. Now let's have a look at the positive features and the negative features of the public distribution system. Let's begin with the positive features. Public distribution system has helped in keeping food prices stable by providing food to people at subsidized rates. This system has prevented large scale hunger and famine by supplying food from surplus regions to the deficit ones. Efforts have been made to extend benefits of public distribution system to the poorest of the poor. Procurement of food grains at attractive minimum support prices has provided assured income to farmers and boosted food grain production. Procurement of food grains by the FCI to create a buffer stock is an essential requirement for public distribution system. Now put the light on the adverse effects of the public distribution system. Maintaining such large stocks is expensive and wasteful due to rotting and deterioration of food grains in storage houses. Procurement of wheat and rice at enhanced minimum support prices has diverted farmers from growing other food grains like jowar and bajra. 
increasing cultivation of water intensive crops like rice is leading to over exploitation of limited water resources in many areas frequent complaints against pdf dealers pds dealers like diversion of good quality grain to open market selling poor quality grain and keeping irregular shop timings unsold stock left with pds dealers till 1997 all families with ration card could buy a fixed quota of food grains and sugar from ration shops at uniform subsidized rates now with tpds of three different prices any family above the poverty line gets very little discount at the ration shop now people with above poverty line ration cards get very little subsidy on prices and thus have little incentives to buy from ration shops this shows the unequal effectiveness of public distribution system in different states role of cooperative in food security the cooperatives were also playing an important role in food security in india especially in the southern and western parts of the country the cooperative society set up shops to sell low price goods to poor people for example out of all fair price shops running in tamil nadu around 94% are being run by the cooperatives in delhi mother dairy is making strides in provision of milk and vegetables to the consumers at control rate decided by the government of delhi Amul is another success story of cooperatives in milk and milk products from Gujarat. It has brought about the wide revolution in the country. There are few examples of many more cooperatives running in different parts of the country ensuring food security of different sections of society. Similarly in Maharashtra, Academy of Development Science has facilitated a network of NGOs for setting up grain banks in different regions Academy of Development Science organizes training and capacity building programs on food security for NGOs Grain banks are now slowly taking shape in different parts of Maharashtra ADS efforts to set up grain banks to facilitate replication through other NGOs and to influence the government's policy on food security are thus paying rich dividends the ads grain bank program is now acknowledged as a successful and innovative food security intervention now quickly see the food security in india food security availability accessibility and affordability of food why food security after the worst famine of bengal in 1943 the government took steps for securing the food for poorest section of the society as well as the people of the country who are food insecure groups of the country very low land productivity people people affected by natural disasters and pregnant women and children under the age of 5 years constitute the food insecure groups green revolution affected a lot in promoting the food grains The buffer stock, stock of food grains namely wheat and rice is known as buffer stock. Public distribution system, ration shops were installed in places. Grains like kerosene, sugar, etc. grains, kerosene, sugar, etc. were given to the people. Role of cooperatives in food security. Set up shops to sell low price uh, goods to poor people. Amul is the success story of cooperative Mother Dairy is another story of a successful cooperative I hope the topic is clear